Good afternoon, everyone. I am Lisa Lord, and we do apologize for the late start, but as you would appreciate, quite a bit is happening behind the scenes. We're coming to you from the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center, and this is a media briefing and update as it relates to Tropical Storm Elsa, as the island remains under a tropical storm warning. Now, at the head table, we have Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Dale Marshall, the Minister of Home Affairs, Information and Public Affairs, Affairs, the Honorable Wilfred Abrams, and the Minister of Transport, Works, and Water Resources, the Honorable Ian Gooding Edgel. To my far right is the Director of the Barbados Met Services, Mr. Savile Best, and we also have several senior government officials representing a range of key ministries and departments here with us, as well as the media. We will start first with the Prime Minister. Thank you very much, um, Lisa. I just want to say to all Barbadians that clearly we have an urgent matter that is upon us with respect to Tropical Storm Elsa and I'm asking everyone who is listening to listen carefully and who is not listening um, those of you who are listening I'd like you to carry a message to people who are not listening because do not assume that everybody is on social media do not assume that everyone is listening to a radio and therefore the combined efforts of communication as we prepare ourselves under this tropical storm watch is absolutely critical. Uh, we've gathered, cabinet met this morning and took presentations and updates from everyone and as you already know the traffic is horrendous on the roads. We're asking people to moderate but I'd like to invite um, Mr. Best to allow us to have an update first from him and also from the Coastal Zone um, Management Unit from Dr. Brewster because of the implications of this storm and after that I will then invite the Minister of Home Affairs to carry us through um, with the various departments what the various issues and elements and of course we will take questions in order to be able to do this. Can I emphasize brevity on the part of everyone because this is a um, system in motion. It is moving quickly as you'll hear from uh, Mr. Bess and therefore we don't want to spend longer in here than we need to because we need everyone to get on with the business. Um, Mr. Bess, are you ready sir? Thank you Prime Minister. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to all Barbadians. I'm going to start off by reading off for you advisory number 4A, uh, Tropical Storm Elsa. This is issued at 2 o'clock this afternoon from the Met Office. Uh, tropical Storm Warning is, remains in effect for Barbados. Uh, tropical Storm Warning is issued when sustained winds of 34 to 63 knots, or that's 39 to 73 miles per hour, associated with a tropical storm or hurricane are forecast to affect Barbados within 36 hours. In this case, very early, in the very early hours of the morning on Friday, the 2nd of July, 2021. At 2 p.m., the center of Tropical Storm Elsa was located near latitude 10.6 degrees north, longitude 52.6 degrees west, or about 495 miles, that's 795 kilometers, East southeast of Barbados. Maximum sustained winds are near 45 miles per hour, that's 75 kilometers per hour. And tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 90 miles, that's 150 kilometers, mainly to the north of the center. Elsa is currently moving towards the west at 28 miles per hour, that's 44 kilometers per hour, and even faster motion towards. The west northwest is expected over the next 24 to 36 hours. On its current forecast track, the center of Tropical Storm Elsa should pass about 40 miles, uh, 65 kilometers, to the south of Barbados on Friday morning. Rainfall accumulations of 6 to 8 inches are forecast across Barbados on Friday. Watches or warnings for flash flooding may be issued from Thursday evening, 1st of July, 2021. The next advisory will be issued by the Met Office at 5 p.m. Uh, I just want to also touch about the marine conditions. 
Uh, currently, there's a marine advisory in effect for Barbados for, uh, uh, for the adverse swells we expect from uh, ELSA. Uh, we are forecasting swells in open water four to, six, four to five meters, particularly on the eastern sections of the coastlines of Barbados, southeastern and southwestern sections. The western sections of the island will be a little sheltered because of the trajectory of the system, but we are forecasting swells in open water just offshore of the west coast around uh, two to three meters. This, would, uh, this basically will result in uh, choppy waters, particularly along the west coast. There will be some uh, beach erosion, uh, possibly some water coming up to some roads like in Six Men's area, uh, which is notorious when we have uh, really rough sea conditions. But the greater impacts of the greater waves will be on the eastern coast, like I mentioned, southeast and southwest. Um, if you can see on, this, uh, on your screen, I, can, I have a satellite imagery up of, uh, this is the latest satellite loop, and you can see Barbados on the left here by the, the, the pin icon. And to the right, this is actually ELSA, and the center is actually displaced slightly to the left of the deep convection. Uh, this is happening because the system is actually racing along and decoupling itself as it races towards the west. Uh, towards uh, the south of Barbados. This similar kind of uh, sing satellite signature is, is probably going to what we're going to see throughout the late evening and to tonight. And um, coming into, just to give some kind of idea as to when we can expect to see an increase in winds. Uh, sometime after uh, 2 or 3 o'clock uh, in the early hours of Friday morning, we expect winds to increase to just perhaps under tropical storm force. And uh, as we go into uh, daybreak around uh, 6, 7, or 8 o'clock in the morning, winds should uh, peak up to around tropical storm force winds. Afterwards, uh, we expect to see an increase in rainfall, also along with the increase of winds uh, in the early hours in the morning. And the deterioration of sea conditions should also follow suit. I should have mentioned that the forecast intensity for ELSA by the time it reaches to the south of Barbados is that uh, she should be, um, maximum sustainment should be around 60 miles per hour. Uh, there's no indication that ELSA would do any rapid intensification because of the rapid forward motion of the system. So that's a plus, uh, but there's still the potential that ELSA will strengthen slowly as she moves towards the west. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you very much um, for the clarity. Um, I'd like to invite Dr. Brewster to come to the podium and to add particularly as it relates to the marine conditions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Prime Minister. Based on what we have been able to assess at the Coastal Zone Management Unit and in discussion with the Met Services, the following areas are of greatest concern uh, for us in terms of potential storm surge damage, especially on the east coast and the southeast coast. Those areas would be low-lying areas along the coastline, such as Cattle Wash, Lakes, Bath, Concept Bay, Martins Bay, and St. Mark's, predominantly, as well as some areas along the southeast coast, such as uh, the Crane and Seaview St. Philip. Any other concerns or warnings in respect to um, the West Coast or anything else you want people to be aware of? Uh, just in general. Of, um, movement of pleasure craft into safe harbor, given the choppiness? Yes, uh, we would recommend that all pleasure craft and, and fishing vessels make the necessary arrangements to find safe harbor, either in Port St. Charles or within the British Town Fishing Complex. We do know that the, the hoist at Concept Bay is also working, so some vessels that are normally on the East Coast can make their way to Concept Bay to get hauled out um, during this time. I think in addition to that, as, as Mr. Best from the Met Services rightfully pointed out, the West Coast is gonna be very choppy. Uh, as a result of the sargasm seaweed that also came in on the night of the 16th when we had the lightning storm, there's a lot of uh, narrowing of the beaches, especially on the east coast, the southeast coast, and the south coast. And therefore, that natural buffer that's provided by the beaches is uh, reduced. And therefore, that's why we have concern, especially at this time, 
in terms of the amount of potential wave damage that can happen to the beaches and some coastal properties within the area. So we would advise everyone to pay special attention to the Met Service broadcasts and the Department of Emergency Management. Thank you, Dr. Brewster, for your clarity as well. Um, much of what members of the media are hearing, you're going to need to repeat for us as a public service to the, to the, to the country so that I don't expect people will have captured everything that either Mr. Bess or Dr. Brewster have said, but those need to be parceled out and will be by public affairs, but also members of the media in order to be able to get that repetition going. At this stage, um, I'd like to ask the Minister of Home Affairs to address where we are, given the updates from the Met Office and from the Coastal Zone Management Unit, and then for him to invite those other public officials or ministers that need to be very um, clear in their updates. But as I said, brevity is the issue at the time of the afternoon that we are. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Um, as I said, we will keep this quite brief. From as early as yesterday, once we confirmed the trajectory of the system and that it was likely to develop into a storm, we accelerated a lot of our hurricane preparedness activities. Now, being prepared in the hurricane season does not mean being prepared at the beginning and stopping. It's a constant refresh of your preparation. You have to be prepared and keep prepared. We met yesterday with all of the key agencies and departments who play a role in disaster management, and we took a status report from them. Some activities happened since that meeting, and Cabinet was briefed again this morning as to the current state of preparedness of Barbados. I am pleased to say that we are in a way better shape than we were this time last year or the year before, and most of the key preparation has actually, in fact, happened. Um, there are some developments that the public needs to be aware of, particularly in relation to shelters. Some new shelters have come on board. Persons need to know where those shelters are. And the Prime Minister probably will address a little bit more, more fully before we end. But following the free incident over the last couple of weeks, we are aware of the fragility of a number of the properties in Barbados. And we are expecting sustained storm force winds, sustained winds in excess of the winds that we would have had a week and a half ago. So people need to look around their houses, make themselves as prepared as they can be, pick up all the loose objects that can become missiles, clear the drains. If you have a well on your property, um, clear the waterways, and just make yourself as prepared as you can be. But also this is a time for us to be honest with ourselves. If we do not believe that our house will stand up to storm force winds, then we have to seek shelter. The shelters will be open. Um, Ms. The Chief Education Officer Joy Adamson is going to speak to you next. Please be honest with yourselves. If you are not comfortable or you have misgivings about staying home or staying in place in this system, we ask you please to move early. I will speak about the other things after that, but I think now is a convenient time to ask Ms. Adamson to address the matters of shelters and the protocols for the shelters. Thank you, Minister, Madam Prime Minister, other ministers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We have category one shelters, 33, that have been put in place and activated, 20 public and 13 private shelters. Now category one shelters will be opened at 5.30 this afternoon. And the category one shelters are for, that these will be open prior to the event. Category two shelters will only be open after the event if we need to open those shelters. The shutters have started to be put in place at all of our Category 1 shelters, and that is ongoing. As you're aware, some shelters had CXC exams um, happening, so therefore we had a delay there. But the majority of the shutters have been up, and we have started to fill the diesel tanks for shelters with generators. Now, I also, Mr. Minister, to, I want to speak about CXC because 
Once there is a national shutdown of the country, all of our examination centers will be closed and examinations will be canceled for that day. That means that the students who will be writing the CAPE examinations and the CSEC examinations tomorrow, the CXC will be using their adverse conditions policy and we are, no candidate will be disadvantaged. So there will be no CXC examinations tomorrow because for the shutdown, the examination shelters will, examination centers will be closed. So our shelters are up, all of our shelter wardens have been notified and they would have been in preparation from yesterday. And we are informing now that those shelters should open at 5.30 p.m. Mr. Minister. Uh, Ms. Adamson, just please for clarity, can you just give the names of the shelters and in particular the names of the new shelters so persons can be aware of those? and if they category one or two shelters. Okay, so the new shelters that would have been added since last year, we have in Christchurch, Dunamis Outreach Ministries, in St. Andrew, Hillaby Seventh-day Adventist Church, St. George, Ellerton Wesleyan Holiness Church, St. James, Orange Hill Church of God, St. Joseph, Tamrin Hall Library, the Eric Holder Municipal Complex, St. Lucy, the William Donald George Parish Center, that is St. Lucy Parish Church. St. Michael, we have Harrison College, Parkinson Memorial, the University of the West Indies, that is the Sajikor Building, Faith Wesleyan Holiness Church, and in St. Philip, we have the Ruby Nazarene Church. These are the new ones that would have been added. The full list of shelters, they have been in a PSA for GIS, they're also on our website, on DEM's website, but just for persons who might not be aware, the list of the shelters, we have the Black Madangala Primary, Primary School, Christchurch Foundation, Gordon Walters Primary, and St. Christopher Primary. In St. George, we have Cuthbert Moore Primary, Gordon Greenish, sorry, that's not, that's St. George, we have Cuthbert Moore Primary. In St. James, we have Gordon Greenwich Primary and Queens College. In St. John, we have the Lodge School. In St. Joseph, we just heard we have the Tamarin Hall Library. In St. Michael, Combermere School, Ellerslie School, Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center. In St. Peter, we have Courage and Parry School and Roland Edwards. In St. Philip, we have the Hilda Scheme Primary. And in St. Thomas, we have Hillaby Turner's Hall and the Lester Vaughan School. Those are the public shelters. The privately owned shelters will include, the other than the ones that I called earlier, Connell Town Pentecostal House of Prayer in St. Lucie. We have in St. Michael, the Black Rock, Rock Seventh-day Adventist. Dalkeef Methodist, right, those are the other ones would have been called, and then in St. Philip, the Six Roads Church of Christ and the Six Roads Seven Day Adventists. So those are, we have 13 privately owned shelters and we have 20 public shelters. Minister. Thank you, if you can just as well, um, inform us of the protocols in place for using the shelters? Okay, so we always encourage persons to go to family first, but if you don't have any family or friends that you can stay with, we would advise you to report to the shelter. You should at least walk with your own personal belongings, and we would want persons to, before you leave home, to fill any containers with water that you want, just in case you have to come back. Um, shut off your water and electricity, shut off your gas, lock all your windows, and make sure all these things are um, for pets. Their pets are not allowed in the emergency shelter, so you should make sure that you make all arrangements for your pets so that you will have them, you don't leave them um, secured, locked up in any way, but you have them so that they will be able to um, be safe but not roam and, inf and interfere with any persons in the area. You are to 
take all your valuables that we would want in terms of your driver's license, your identification, the insurance policies, all of your important documents, you want those secured. And you should be walking with food, at least to, for you and your family, all the medications that you will need. The, we will not be supplying cots or beds in the shelter, so if you want, you can bring, if you have a sleeping bag, something to make yourself comfortable. Make sure you do have your medication and any special foods in terms of a special diet. If you have a baby, if you have an elderly person, you need to make sure that you take the requirements for those persons, and obviously extra clothing. If you want, you should also take things to entertain, especially small children, and keep yourself occupied. And we are recommending for the shelters that you have at least three days' supply of water and food if you're going into the shelter. We will try wherever possible to assist persons after the event, but we will want persons to at least walk with some amount of food because we wouldn't be serving at least before the event. If anything, we will work after the event. When you arrive at the shelter, you should be registered so we have an idea of the persons who are in the shelter and we will expect that we would have good behavior. Now we are aware that the COVID-19 is with us and therefore there are strict protocols in terms of screening. As you enter the shelter, your temperature will be taken and your hands sanitized. So all the shelters will have these things in place and we have the distances. Please follow the directions of the shelter manager as it relates to where families can stay in clusters, but we will want at least you maintain that six feet distancing in designated spaces within the shelter. And you must be wearing your mask at all times while in the shelter. There should be no large gatherings of persons and all of the protocols that we are accustomed to now over the last couple of months will be in place. So those are the main things that we will want you to be aware of. This information is on the ministry's website and also on DEM's website and I'm aware that JAS is also sharing that information as well. Thank you very much. Um, at this stage, Minister Abrams, thank you ma'am. You're welcome. Um, at this stage, of the lateness of the hour, I think you want to address the shutdown times and the transport times, and then I'll ask the Attorney General to address the issue of transport and density, um, given what is ahead of us in the next few hours. Minister? Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Um, the public service should have been shut down already, the close-off time for the public service, and for non-essential private sector was 2 p.m., um, 3 p.m. is the... The non-essential private sector is 3 p.m. Sorry. The service was 2. Public service is 2. Non-essential private sector was 3 p.m. The essential services, which would include shops, supermarkets, um, anything that... Hardware stores, anything that is connected or concerned with the storm, we're looking at 7 o'clock for that. Gas stations are allowed to open, to remain open until 10 because a lot of people will be rushing last minute to try to get your gas and we also need for the public service vehicles to be able to get gas up. But if you are as a gas station owner, allow your gas station to open until 10, you're responsible for getting your staff home because the last bus is going to be leaving Bridgetown at 9 p.m. So at 9 p.m. the bus service will be sending out their last buses. So if you are one of the gas stations who is open until 10, you're responsible for getting your staff home. We ask in Barbadians, please to be off the road as early as possible um, to allow the emergency services to operate. If I may, uh, Minister Jordan has already reached out to the gas station owners, I believe, in order to communicate to them that they would be required to take their own staff home if they want to stay open until 10 p.m. Okay. Um, Attorney General, you would you like to address the issue of public transport and density for me, please? Thank yes, you. thank you very much, Prime Minister. Um, I think everyone would recognize that this is an extraordinary circumstance. You would know that under the COVID directive, the maximum capacity that was allowed for public transportation was 75%. 
obviously given the large number of people that will have to be transported uh, between now, the public service having already closed, and the time the last bus leaves is terminal tonight at 9, um, we have had to take a decision which we have not taken lightly. We consulted, we consulted uh, thoroughly with the Ministry of Health officials and in particular the Chief Medical Officer. The Chief Medical Officer advises the Prime Minister on all COVID-related matters. Uh, given the exigencies of this situation, uh, we've therefore accepted the advice of the Chief Medical Officer that in this particular circumstance and for the duration of the night, uh, we will permit public transport to move to its full capacity. So between now and the time the last bus leaves its terminal or the last van moves off from its operating spot, public transport will be at full capacity. This, however, is subject to the strict observance of all COVID protocols and in particular the wearing of masks. Um, we know that everyone is going to be a little bit anxious, everyone wants to get home, everyone wants to, to take care of the important things, but taking care of our health and taking care not to spread COVID is of significant importance at this time. So we are allowing, just let's make it clear, we are allowing all public transport to move to full capacity for the night. Thereafter, so from tomorrow morning, uh, we will, when, when we get the all clear and public transport resumes, uh, we will revert to 75%. But so as to move people, Prime Minister, um, we're allowing full capacity tonight, subject to strict compliance with the COVID protocols. Thank you. For the avoidance of doubt, is it tonight or is it tonight and tomorrow in the aftermath, immediate aftermath of the storm? Um, Prime Minister, this is a moving target, but obviously we don't want people moving about until the all clear is given. When the all clear is given, it would mean that, um, at least in terms of public transport, we're, we're back to normal. Uh, so as long as the transport side of things can, can remobilize, uh, we'd be reverting to the 75%. So it's only to allow us to move in this urgent circumstance, the large number of people that have to be moved. Uh, should circumstances require it, we can always rethink that. Uh, but for the moment, this is only for tonight. Thank you. Um, at this stage, Minister, the next set of people to come will be who? Public Works? Public Works, Prime Minister. P.S. Cummins, thanks. Good afternoon, Prime Minister, members of Cabinet, members of the media, colleagues, Ministry of Public Works. We have been working um, assiduously to clear all of the necessary waterfalls and, uh, and drains. And we are conf confident that we have been able to get to um, clear the majority of them. The, we have two active construction sites, one at Murphy's Pasture and one at Greenwich Road. As I speak to you, the officers are there putting some mitigation measures in place to ensure that um, any, especially at Murphy Pasture, to ensure that the area of the retention pond, and for those of you who know the area, the old canal, that that area is shored up so that we can direct the water out towards Fontebell and into the, um, into the pump house. We have checked the pump house at Princess Alice and it is operational. The TMR technicians were there. We are checking the other pump houses across the island. I know some of you will be concerned about the sluice gate. Um, the sluice gate has been raised and we have also built a weir at the um, sluice gate to allow for the um, tidal flows, both the salt water to come in and the fresh water to go out to improve the life of the life of the swamp. Our tree trimming crews are out. In other words, the Ministry of Public Works, we are in the process of ensuring that all of the necessary things that we need to do to make sure that 
uh, we are as safe as possible. We are, we are put, putting those things in place, and we also have the, our teams are on standby to ensure that when the all clear is given, or if we have to go out during the, during the event, that we are ready, we are ready to do so. We have uh, mobilized all of, our, all of our depots. Our essential workers are fully aware, appraised, and outfitted. And we have also, given the event that occurred approximately two weeks ago when um, we, there was a lot of um, tree felling, we were able to, fortunately, we were able to get some additional chainsaws, and we've distributed those chainsaws across the, our depot network. So we think we are much better prepared than we were two weeks ago. But the biggest challenge, as we know, given with the six to eight inches of rain will be flooding, and we are on standby. We have station equipment at the Barbados Defense Force Paragon Base, also at the Barbados Defense Force St. Anne's Base and the Northern Base of the Dal Jordan School so that we have equipment there that is ready to go and clear the, clear the roads and carry out any other activity that is, um, that is required. I think that's it, Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Cummins. Thank you. Um, Mr. Halliday, can you please update us on the water situation? Thank you. Good afternoon, Prime Minister, Ministers. Um, the Barbados Water Authority has been making all of the necessary preparations uh, for the emergencies, which would have included the management of its community tanks. I uh, just want to caution that uh, as we get closer to the system, typically six hours, we will lock off all community tanks. They will be topped up and locked off for security reasons, so lest they become mis um, flying missiles and only after the all clear is given will then they be accessible. Uh, similarly, the water tankers will continue to work upwards until about four hours closer to, depending on the severity of the system, until the system reaches us. Uh, we will continue to top up all residential households as much as we possibly can, and then those tankers will be secured and deployed in a number of areas, the predetermined areas across the country, to make sure as well that they are accessible or have ease of access after the system has passed. We want to make sure that everyone understands that you, you, still continue, you should still continue to adhere to the protocol of storing as much water as you can, at least five gallons per person per day, and for a minimum of five days. And also remember to secure water for your pets as well and make sure that they're covered to protect the quality of that water. With respect to South Coast, and we know that a number of individuals will be curious as to where we are, we have ensured that the outfall has been further secured. A number of stainless steel straps would have been put in place over the last several weeks. We have provisions in place in the event that we have any severe disruption or damage to the outfall for an immediate crew to move in and to deal with any necessary repairs. So the pipes are in place and the crews have been put on alert. And we have also a number of sites that we have been working on for a number of projects. Those sites we have been securing, making sure that any loose material and equipment have been put away. And this also applies to our facilities. We have well in excess of 40 facilities that we need to manage, and we have been going around and making sure that we are securing those facilities as much as we can. And the issue of generation capacity or backup, we have sufficient generators in place now to secure close to 80% of our water supply delivery. We have procured an additional number of standby generators to help and to, deploy, to be deployed to the various facilities as need be. This is something that we make sure that we do because, and the, in terms of the deployment, we have them deployed at a number of locations because in any event, once you have a system in place, we're not sure what roads would be accessible. Um, lastly, we have been monitoring all of what we will call the essential services and a number of facilities, be it hospitals, polyclinics, health facilities, 
Category 1 and 2 shelters. We have been checking and liaising with our respective ministries on all of them. We are satisfied that all of them are sufficiently topped up and uh, we are on standby as well to make sure during the course of the evening that we are be able to respond. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Halliday. Um, at this point in time, I'm going to ask the director of the DEM, Ms. Carrie Hines, to please address us so that Barbadians can know what to do if anything happens, the numbers for the DEM and the emergency contact numbers. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Good afternoon, ministers, colleagues, media, ladies and gentlemen. The National Emergency Operations Center will be activated tonight at 10 p.m. All the various agencies who are a part of the crisis coordination cell will be present at number 24 Warren's Industrial Park. The, at that time, we will ensure that you have there are periodic updates to the public in terms of the progression of the system as well as any additional information that we would want persons to, to know. The, you are free to call the Department of Emergency Management and the National EOC. The numbers are 438-7575. As I said, the various agencies, including the Royal Barbados Police Force, um, various agencies of government, as well as volunteers and the private sector, will be a part of that coordination cell to take any reports and also to make any critical decisions or recommend any make recommendations to the cabinet with respect to the system. Um, just to indicate as well or district emergency organizations have all been activated and they're in the field making last minute checks and preparatory actions to ensure that they are ready to go once, you, once the help is required in the community. I encourage Barbadians as well to make your last minute preparations and monitor all the various channels. Thank you. Thank you. At this point in time, I just want to reemphasize that last point. Um, social media has a way of getting away from us sometimes. Please monitor the official government information sources, which include the Government Information Service, the Public Affairs Department, CBC, and our official and reliable media partners. We will be updating you at least every hour on the progress of the system through the official sources. You have no reason to look anywhere else or forward things that you're not certain as to the origin. Please monitor the Government Information Service, the Public Affairs Department, CBC, and our official media partners. At this point in time, I'm going to ask the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Kenneth George, to come and update us on the arrangements um, under the Ministry of Health. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Good afternoon, ministers, members of the media. A couple of things. Um, quickly, we are in a COVID environment, so persons using the shelters, I would like to reiterate that they must come with their masks. They are to come with um, their own hand sanitizers also, because they may need that and they need to know that social distancing will be enforced so that, please, we are in a COVID environment and what we don't want is an outbreak of COVID within one of the, um, the shelters. With respect to the hospital, their plans are well advanced. The hospital is going to ma maintain a service throughout, before, throughout, and after the impending storm. Um, several plans have been made. There is good water supply. There is good electricity supply. So we have those things in order and there are an abundance of staff who will be able to be deployed both during and after the storm. With respect to our polyclinics, they would be closed during the storm period. 
please stay um, close to your um, radios, etc., because that will give you the all clear, and that will indicate when the polyclinics can be open for business. We at the polyclinics have determined that we have good water supply and electricity generation to maintain a service after impending weather. So we just require the cooperation of all Barbadians, and we will write this one out too. Thank you so much. One last thing before I turn over to the Prime Minister, and then I guess for questions. I cannot emphasize this. You said you're moving people from Paragon? So Paragon, um, because it is coastal, Paragon has been because they have some issues. Um, Paragon is not going to be um, operational. We have made all provisions for the safe movement of those individuals. Who, who remain on the quarantine, absolutely. We're not going to break quarantine to um, the issues surrounding quarantine from the people in Paragon. Thank you. Okay, before I turn over to the Prime Minister, um, safety is the key thing right now. Safety and your safety is the focus of the government. It's the reason we are doing everything that we are doing. But we can only do so much. I'm asking Barbadians once again, please just look around you and assess your own situation. If you feel that you need to go to a shelter, I'm urging you please to go early. It becomes difficult, if not impossible, to assist you once storm conditions are actually affecting the country. So look around you, and if you think you need to go to a shelter, then please make your way there. If you have, are having difficulty in getting to a shelter, please call the numbers that Kerry would have indicated with respect to the DEM, and we will try to arrange assistance to get you there. You are responsible at the end for your own safety. Just look around your house, look around your surroundings, and secure everything that needs to be secured. Um, the last thing, you would have seen across Barbados a lot of activity with clearing the drains and the Sanitation Service Authority was out in full force today doing garbage pickups. If your garbage has not been picked up by a certain time, then please just bring it inside and also secure your garbage bins. We are very concerned. We are concerned about the rain. We are concerned about the water impact, but we are equally as concerned about the wind and things becoming missiles. So please. We are going to circulate all this messaging again before the, the event. But for those who have heard, just you have some time still to secure your surroundings. I'm asking you to use remaining time wisely. PM. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, there are other briefings that the Cabinet would have taken, and there's no need for us to go through them comprehensively here, um, relating to security briefings, relating to matters for access to food, relating to the deployment of equipment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the briefings that we've given you publicly are intended to help you make decisions and to also give you the comfort levels that the government has put in all things in place to be able, to, one, to ensure that we save lives, two, that we minimize damage to property, and, 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 and as a result, um, if those are our two primary objectives, then all decision-making in the next 24 to 36 hours is premised against that background. The Minister of Foreign Affairs is here too. We have put systems in place. I believe the Minister has put systems in place in the event that there is a shutdown of the telecommunications. We have the capacity still to access the outside world through the um, limited amount of satellite phones that we have. And we have also put arrangements in place for the embassy at Washington um, for in the Americas and the High Commission in the United Kingdom um, to be immediately available in the event of any issues. We will probably put a similar position in place within CARICOM, but we will let the others know once I've had the opportunity to talk to my colleagues um, and to let you know which country in the event that it reaches the worst. You are hearing a greater level of preparation and a greater level of detail, not only because we've done it and we've been doing it, but also because it is absolutely critical and based on all of the warnings so far from the Met Office, any system, as you know, historically, 
that is to our south is always a system that we should take very, very, very seriously. For those who say, well, what happens if it doesn't rain or the wind don't come? Say, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. And, 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 and I am here to say to you, and that is why I supported Mr. Best showing the, um, the visuals while he was speaking. I'm here to say to you that this storm is a threat to Barbados. We will pray, we will do everything that is necessary, and we will hope as well. But hope and prayer at this stage still does not remove from us the obligation of getting ready, of protecting lives, and of protecting property. And to that extent, therefore, we have made the determination that there is nothing more important for us on this island, in this nation, over the course of the next 36 hours than to confront the reality of Tropical Storm Elsa. We hope that there will be no further strengthening, but I'm also here to tell you that I've been around long enough to know that those things can happen too, and therefore Barbadians need to stay glued to all official forms of communication, as the Minister of Home Affairs, um, Wilfred Abrams, has just indicated. We've also taken the decision that we, and we're conscious that should it not be too, too bad, that there's still people who may want to leave the country on Saturday and Sunday who are traveling. The Ministry of Tourism is working with the Ministry of Health to ensure that those persons whose needs have to be satisfied with respect to testing can still be done in the limited um, and restricted ways that will be there. The lab will close tonight from 9 p.m. until early tomorrow afternoon once the all clear is given. But it does mean that those persons who do not need classic PCR tests are obviously more easily accommodated um, because some countries do accept antigen and um, rapid PCR. But there are some countries, I believe Canada is the main one now, that requires classic PCR. So the Ministry of Tourism will work with the Ministry of Health for those of you who are traveling and are worried about what will happen. Um, as to the state of the airport being closed, that is left completely to civil aviation, um, but we wouldn't anticipate that there would be any issues before late tonight with respect to that. But clearly, tomorrow and during the storm would be a different situation. So, my friends, you hear us talking all the time about climate and the climate crisis. This is real. It's not just words that we're bantering about. And I really want, in particular, to appeal to all Barbadians who also know that their houses are vulnerable, know that you're not that sure what would happen if the roof went off and if it looking a little shaky, or you were one of the persons, one of the roughly 135, 165, Minister Dugit, how much is it? 165. One of the 165 houses that was damaged two weeks ago in the freak storm. I am formally, formally appealing to you that in those circumstances, it is better to be safe than sorry. And therefore, that is why we've gone to great detail to be able to ensure that the, 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 the shelters are there. If you have family that you can go by, by all means, that's the best place to be. But if you don't have family and who can accommodate you, or if their houses are at risk too, then I really suggest that you make use of the shelters that we have. I have, in my life, now seen too many instances of people saying we should have, we could have, but we didn't. And I really had enough of it. So I'm asking those of you, please, to take in front before it takes you. If it does not come, you've been away from home for a night. If it doesn't come, you're in a position to say thank you to the Almighty. Because anybody who has been through a serious storm, I know people are excited, I know all of those things, there is nothing to play about with, not even vaguely, as it relates to this. And I want to urge, too, that the officials will take a very, very dim view 
of people who want to go joyriding in the middle of the storm because you are putting other people's lives at risk. People who want to go joyriding will know that they will face the consequences because you are placing other people's lives at risk to save yours or to save others whose lives may be affected because of your reckless actions. Trust me, anything that you want to see, there's more than enough footage on YouTube for storms that went before. And I'm sure that there will be more cameras looking out the windows, taking shots as happened with the freak storm the other day. But stay in your house, please, um, for those, or stay in your shelter. I don't think that there's anything else, and therefore I open up the floor to questions. At this stage, if we've left out anything, if there's need for any greater clarity, there are a number of officials here, there are a number of ministers here. Um, we took a decision to abridge cabinet today significantly, obviously, for the reasons that we all know. Well, I'll members just ask media? members of the media to Lisa? use the microphone in the center of the room. And Barry Allen is first, Nation News. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Just two quick questions for the director of the Meteorological Services, Mr. Best. Uh, based on the organization of this cyclone, Mr. Best, uh, can you give us an approximate, how, how probable is severe weather in the early hours of this morning based on the current trajectory and the winds? Sorry, thanks for the question. We said this morning, I mean next Based morning. on how this system is organized, this particular cyclone, okay. and its trajectory and its movement now, uh, for, what level of adversity of, of weather are you really looking at? Any tropical cyclone, full stop, adverse weather is highly possible. So regardless if it's showing signs of it now or later, always take it strong possible. It will happen. Uh, we shouldn't toy around with it. On solid imagery, it may not look that impressive, but I can assure you there are times when these things come true, they can just go boom, right on top of you. And so we should take it seriously regardless of how it looks. At this stage, would you consider this a well-organized system or is it quite disorganized at this time? It is needed to, not very well organized. You see like rapid intensification tropical cyclone or tropical storm, and it's not disorganized that you see in, um, uh, I mean, it's sheer, the convection is sheared all the way off the, um, away from the center and stuff like that. That's not what's going on. It's a little bit exposed because, the, like I said before, the, the, the low-level center is outrunning the mid-level center. and so. That's not, um, that's not as bad as it can be in terms of being pulled apart. And finally, how possible is this system uh, becoming a Category 1 hurricane at this stage? At this point, because the, like I mentioned, because of the, the, the fact that is, um, the low-level jet is pushing ahead, the low-level um, vortex ahead of the mid-level one is kind of like decoupling itself. And so that's limiting any possibility of rapid intensification. And so intensification should be a very slow process. And that's what we've seen past the past 24 hours. It's just basically like adding on five miles per hour or so. Very slow, very slow climb. Katrina King from Loop News. Hi, good afternoon. I have just two quick questions. Uh, firstly, what is going to be done for the homeless, especially those members of the homeless community who might be refusing to move from their spots during this time period? And also, with regards to the shelters, will there be monitors present to make sure that persons in, um, abide by the protocols and to enforce the protocols? And additionally, Dr. George would have said that we don't want an outbreak of COVID at the shelters. So will you be, as a precautionary measure, will you be like rapid testing persons before they leave the shelters once the all clear is given? Um, Dr. George, come, please. Um, with respect to the, the security, there will be security at the shelters, and the security will have to enforce the COVID-19 protocols. Um, I'm awaiting a report as to who and how that will be done, but suffice it to say that it is on our list. Dr. George? There is no requirement for you to be COVID tested to go into a protocol, to go into a shelter. Please recall that before we had testing and we knew about a lot of the new technological things that we have come up with, the simple methods of social distancing or physical distancing, wearing a mask and hand sanitizing, 
should be sufficient enough to prevent infection within a space. So that's why we are appealing to the public, but certainly not as a prerequisite for entering a shelter. Any further questions? Or after. Katrina again. Just, um, Dr. George, I wasn't asking about entering the shelters. I was saying about leaving the shelters. Just to clarify. No, there's no, um, there's no requirement for testing for leaving the shelters or entering the shelters. Thank you. Members um, of the media? Sorry, go ahead, Liam. Yes. I, I hear you, and I will have a conversation with Dr. George because I think the government, Dr. George, does have sufficient um, of the of, of, of tests for anyone who wants to be tested, and with any certainly we have enough rapid tests available as well that can give us a quick filter if necessary. So I would ask that we put that in place, Dr. George. I think that the young lady has made a good point and that we would do well to take it on. Okay? Thank you. Any Members other comments? Members of the media, any further questions? No? Prime Minister, I will hand back over to you if there are no further questions. No. Thank you. At this stage, my dear friends, all that is left for us to do is to get on with the business of taking care of our own lives and taking care of our property, taking care of the lives of those who depend on us and who are our neighbors, um, and equally the properties. Minister Abrams made a good point, and I want to reinforce it. I found that in every major storm, we still have to remind people anything that can fly and be lifted up by 30, 40, 50 miles of wind is a missile. And a missile is capable of killing and injuring people. And to that extent, therefore, we have a couple of hours left. I want to urge people in communities, help one another. I want to urge people to go and look around your house and look for anything that can literally cause that kind of damage. And finally, I repeat, if you are not comfortable where you are, we can accommodate you in the shelters. If you have been a victim of one of the 165 houses that was damaged in the freak storm, we can accommodate you if you can't be accommodated in your household. And if you are leaving home, very simply, walk with your identification documents, walk with your medication if you have any, walk with anything else that is critical. At this point, I believe that all that is left for me to do is to ask, um, and, and, and I'm looking to ask who will offer up a word of prayer for the nation as we go forward into the next 36 hours. Prime is Minister, there sorry, there was one question Katrina asked that was not answered Which regarding the homeless, provisions for the homeless. Okay, and um, I know that Mr. Safri, Minister Abrams, you want to speak? Provision has been, the homeless are free to use the shelters like anyone else. They will be accommodated um, with respect to whether or not we can force them into the shelter I would have to actually ask the AG about that, but there is more than enough shelter accommodation to accommodate everybody who is in need of shelter accommodation at this point in time. But there's also the Barbados Association um, that we took a report on this morning that can accommodate 90 persons in the homeless shelter. So, I mean, we will encourage them as much as all others to go in. Um, at this point in time, it is half past three, and we really, really want people to get into there as possible. We do know that some of the persons who are homeless do have mental wellness issues, and therefore it is not a straightforward um, situation. But under the law, we do have certain powers, and where persons or families are in need of assistance, they need to reach out at this stage urgently and call. Remember that I said the most urgent, the most important thing, sorry, is the saving of lives and then the protection of property and, and the public spaces that are necessary for people to move in and the institutions that will be open. I'm satisfied that the hospital and the key clinics have the requisite amount of support systems that they need 
and therefore that we are in good shape as far as that is concerned. Um, as I was saying just before I wrapped up, that I really would like um, us to be led into a word of prayer, and I am therefore looking at Minister Abrams on the side of my eyes. Um, normally I would have looked at Minister Jordan, who is legitimately an elder in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, but Minister Abrams, I believe that you have a certain affinity, and I think that at this point in time, the country would welcome us, even as we go live, with a word of prayer for our protection and the protection of the people of this nation. Thank you. Almighty Father, who knows all and in whose hands we stand, I ask you please to look upon our country, Barbados, look upon our citizens, all who are preparing for the coming weather event. I ask you please to allow us to be responsible. I ask you please to allow people to be honest with themselves and to seek help if they need it. I ask you, Lord, that you spare us what we don't need to have. If it is within your power, Lord, let the system dissipate or pass from us. If the system must come on, let it cause as little damage as possible. Lord, I ask you please to look upon our Prime Minister, our members of Cabinet, the persons who are responsible for managing the country in the times of a disaster. Look upon our police forces, our emergency responders. Look upon the, the essential, service, essential services which are operating until up to possibly 10 o'clock tonight. Let us get these people home safely. Lord, just stretch your hand over Barbados and protect our country. If it must come, Lord, as little damage as possible, but as a grateful, God-fearing people, we ask that you spare us from tropical storm, Elsa. Lord, keep us safe, allow us to be responsible, look upon us with your mercy. Thank you. Thank you very Amen. much. Um, Amen. The last point that I'll make, sorry, and I think um, Assistant Commissioner Louis, the police has also asked for everyone to report and, um, as well, haven't they? Right. So, AG, yeah? Okay. Thank you very much, and go safely, and be well, and be safe. Thank you very much. Thank God you very much. Barbados. And the next update from the Barbados Met Service will be at 5 this evening. Good evening.